Yeah, Danita, it is a legacy that goes beyond the normal metrics that we use for coaches, the wins, the losses, the championships. To his players, he was father, coach, brother, counselor, and priest. I learned that from a guy who might have known him best, Bernie Kosar. Between coaches and quarterbacks, there is a special bond. Bernie Kosar knows that better than any. And in his heart, there will always be a special place for Marty Schottenheimer. Remembering Marty as somebody you, you absolutely love and cherish, and I, I can't thank him enough for the, the structure, the discipline, and the belief he had in me. Yeah, Schottenheimer's first full year as head coach was Kosar's first as starting quarterback. Together, they would turn around a team that started 1-7 and seven the year before into a franchise that would go to two straight conference championships. A former player himself, Kosar said Schottenheimer brought toughness, grittiness, and discipline to the job, and also an attention to detail drive that made players look forward to Sunday. The amount of contact that you went through for practice actually made Sunday not as, not as tough going against other teams, and every Sunday we knew we were ready to play. Schottenheimer would go 44-27 and 27 with the Browns before leaving for Kansas City in 1989, where he would do for the Chiefs what he did for the Browns, a testament, Kosar says, to his football legacy. To put those two teams and those two organizations together within a decade to get to uh, multiple AFC Conference championship games is, is absolutely not an easy feat to do. Schottenheimer was in the early stages of Alzheimer's in 2016 when he returned to Cleveland to be honored with his 86 team, a disease that in his final days robbed him, Kosar says, of truly appreciating this year's playoff showdown between two of his most successful franchises. It's really a shame a, a man who's had such a massive influence on so many of us isn't really able to understand and really know the magnitude of, of a Browns Chiefs game where he had such a major influence. Schottenheimer went on to win 200 games as a head coach, putting him in the top 10 all time, just behind Paul Brown and ahead of Chuck Knoll. But Kosar says the lasting legacy of a coach is not in the wins and losses, but in the lives that were touched and the young characters that were molded. There's a gleam, man. There's a gleam. In life, they kept Schottenheimer from the game's biggest stage, but Kosar is hoping in death he can still achieve the game's biggest honor, a football journey that started in Cleveland, ending just down the road in Canton. To have Marty Schottenheimer um, mention the same breath in that type of organization um, is absolutely confirming to our previous statement of his earning the right to have, have a house in Canton, the Hall of Fame. Now, beyond his football family, Schottenheimer leaves behind his wife, Pat, and his children, Kristen and Brian. And on a personal note, my first job in television in 1989 was in Missouri, working the sidelines of the Kansas City Chiefs games in Marty's first year out there. And it was a privilege and thrill to get to know him from that side of things. Wow, great memory you have, John. And we also know that Marty's son, Brian, is a coach in the league, but he launched the careers of some other well-known coaches. Yeah, how about it? I'm Bruce Arians, who won the Super Bowl two nights ago, got his start with Marty Schottenheimer. Super Bowl winning coaches as well that did. Uh, Bill Cower of the Steelers, Mike McCarthy of the Packers, now Cowboys, and Tony Dungy of the Colts. So he, he really launched a lot of careers. A great man who will be missed. Thank you so much, John Kosick.